that was unclear now is clear. Because the world, the universe, and truth are far bigger than the thoughts that you and I have accepted. It's not what you do, it's who you are. This moment right now is the single most important and beautiful moment of our life. Be in this moment, play in this moment, have this moment, live this moment. Want what's happening now. You begin to see that life is not so serious. That we're here to enjoy this experience of life through the tears, through the sadness, and through the fears. Every stream in life, every experience of life is leading me to the ocean of my existence. It's awesome stuff to live. Oh, Buddha! <laughs> we don't need to do anything. There is no place else to be but where we are. From the moment you were born, you never had a chance. You've really got to see the bigger picture of how we were born and what happened to us so you can kind of understand what happened to your spirit along the way of your life. We live in a culture and a society that honors nothing spiritual. We honor only the um, material, things that we can touch and things that we can taste. I had a friend in college who said, if you can't eat it, drink it, smoke it, or drive it, it ain't worth having. And while I used to laugh at all that, I find out as time goes on, he was pretty serious about what he was saying. Either that or he had a premonition about where the world was headed. So what did happen to us? How did we lose our spirit? What happened? Well, here you are in the womb of your mother and your father who created you, maybe haphazardly, who knows. And then the next thing you know, you're born, they turn you upside down, they spank you naked. And from there on, your identity is given to you. You are given a name, you are given a social security number, you are taught what you can do, what you can't do. People are telling you if you're good, if you're bad, if you're right, if you're wrong. And you start identifying unconsciously with all of this. I'm a good person, I'm a bad person. Sometimes you're abused, sometimes you're rewarded. Pretty soon you start living for the idea of trying to be rewarded because you don't want to get in trouble or you want to get the approval of other people, the love of your family or of your friends. And your spirit just slowly dwindles off over in the corner. It isn't considered to be very important. Your education's important. What other people think of you is important. Money's very important. You've got to have lots of money. And then after all that, you still look at your life and you go, something's missing. I have friends, mostly male friends. They live for money. It's money's everything to them. They have a lot of money, then they're happy. I remember this one guy called me on my cell phone one day and he said, I'm really happy. And I said, why? And he says, I just put $20,000 in the bank. And I said, that made you happy? He said, yeah, I'm on top of the world. Isn't that sad? Always down to the dirty old money. It's always about getting, having more. We just don't even know how to use money in our life, much less be happy without it or even with it. I have another friend who has tons of money and he's miserable and I ask him, what more do you want? He says, I don't know what more I want. You'd think I'd be happy. I've got it all and I still am not happy. So what's missing? You got a little money, you got a lot of money. If you don't have enough money, you're not happy. If you have too much, you're not happy. I'll tell you what's missing. Our spirit's missing. We've forgotten who we are. You and I are not here to accumulate we are here to understand ourselves, to maturate into our spirit, to come into ourselves, to find ourselves again. But you won't find yourself in the world. You'll find other people's opinions about you in the world, but you won't find yourself. 
That little journey is the one that life is really all about and that, in my opinion, very few people ever see. I like to look at people like, uh, like cars. <laughs> I'm a guy. I can't help it. I love cars. Ah, here we have a nice little uh, infinity vehicle. Some people identify with this kind of car. They think of themselves, well, look at this. I mean, it means you're kind of middle class, maybe upper middle. What do you think? You've uh, succeeded to a certain degree. Um, you're doing fairly well. You wouldn't mind being uh, hauled around in that, would you? And if somebody saw you, they kind of think, well, you're doing all right. You're not doing too bad. Kind of like our skin, huh? Before you know it, you start living for objects. Now, this this van here, this, this, this tells you a lot. This means that uh, you're probably in your uh, late 20s, early 30s, and you've got kids. You're a breeder, and uh, you're running around making kids and hauling them back to soccer practice and all of that. And This car kind of says it all, doesn't it? About middle class America and growing up. Ah, but then you have this thing. Now, this is a man's truck. Yeah, this, the, look, the weather beaten look. You look at that and you, the guy that sits in there, you know what he's about. He's chewing tobacco and uh, he's probably uh, votes a uh, Republican or something and uh, he doesn't care what anybody thinks of him. He's just driving his car and he's gonna run this into the ground because he paid for it. Huh? Kind of sound like uh, values you live with. Then we have this little honey. Ah, the vet. Now, what does this say? I'm in midlife crisis maybe, huh? Maybe it's telling me uh, I've made it. I've got a ton of money and uh, I'm driving around in this puppy and looking real fine. Maybe a chick getter, huh? Chick magnet type of thing. But I think out of all of these, my favorite one, you got to admit, is this one. What does this car say? We won't go into what this car says. It's basically telling us a lot of things. Maybe I'm struggling or looking for something. Do you understand my analogy? Cars are like skin. We put a lot of value on metal and skin. And we think that the shape of the metal and how much we have, or the shape of the skin or how little or how much we have defines us. Actually, it doesn't. What we really have to begin to look at is the definition of us is found in how we relate to our life. And it doesn't matter what kind of metal you have here. It doesn't matter what other people think of you here because nobody likes you anyway. You drive any of these cars, it isn't gonna change your life. What's gonna change your life? is what lives within you. It's so weird to live in a body. I like to call it the meat suit. Here you have this wonderful spirit inside of you that obviously needs expression, but how we basically live our life is in these like tin cans. We're gonna go for a little cruise in this tin can. I'm supposed to go to the store, but probably just wanna cruise around a little bit. Basically what we do is we take our body and our mind and we live strictly from that. We never know what it means to have a spirit inside of us. And then we try to expect life to be anything but what it is. We, we want life to be good, we want it to be happy. We want meaningful relationships with people without our spirit being involved. We look for commonality in people, in friendships. Look at some of your best friends. Who are they? They're people who have the common problems you have, maybe the common gripes and bitches you have, or the common interests, the things that you like to think about, the things you like to talk about. Basically, <laughs> people are very sectarian. They, they like people who agree with them politically, socially, and religiously. And anything that deviates from that, they don't like too much. It's all about the body and the mind, the conditioning of the body and mind. Let me give you a little story. I think it's kind of an interesting one. You don't hear ministers talk about this. I went to ministerial school. <laughs> I know they don't like talking about this. It seems that Jesus was uh, in a crowded uh, house and he was speaking. He was talking to some friends, teaching. It was very crowded. Nobody could get in or out. A messenger came to the door and said, Jesus, your mother, your brother, and your sister are here, and they wish to speak to you. And he looked at the small group of people crowded in the house, and he said, Who is my mother and who is my brother? But those who seek to do the will of my father. He never went out and saw his family. Can you imagine what you would do in that same situation? How much flack would you have taken given that same situation? Probably a lot. See, what he was really saying is, I am not just a man. 
And I don't live for just common purposes. Just because my mother and my brother and sister out there and they belong to my flesh doesn't mean that they are my true mother, my true brother, my true sister. He was trying to show us and teach us even then, don't relate so much to the body, to the mind. Start letting the spirit be the identity of you. If you looked at your spirit, if you could feel it again, you'd understand everything in the whole life that you've been wondering about. You'd understand where you came from, who you are, what you're about. In fact, the whole essence of life is contained in the very spirit of us. But what we do is we drive around, so to speak, in this world with these earthly bodies, cruising around, looking for meaning, looking for some destination, looking for friendships. I say, friendship is a very important quality in life. To befriend another human being means I have to befriend myself. I find that there are two friendships that I have with people. I can have the friendship of convenience where you scratch my back, I scratch your back. In other words, we find something in each other that mutually benefits us. Or I can find the friendship that lives in me and befriend my own spirit and find that same love in you. Now we have come together more as spiritual beings, less as physical beings. I've had a few friendships like that in my day. It's funny, space and time have nothing at all to do with how I feel about them or how they feel about me. We can be separated for months and even years, but when we come together, it's like nothing's ever changed. Why? Well, our spirits touch. Living beyond the body and the mind is one of the greatest gifts you will ever give yourself, but it doesn't come with philosophy. You've got to practice living in your spirit. Your spirit's got to be more important to you than anything else. In fact, it is your spirit that is the whole identity of who you are. Anything less is just not you. So why do we live for such temporary things? Because we were taught and we were told and we were initiated and we were enchanted by our bodies and minds. We were told that was the only way we'd ever find acceptance and love from other people. You have to come to a very brave point inside your life where you're willing to live alone if you have to for the sake of finding yourself. Not everybody's going to understand you. Not everybody's going to agree with your spiritual practice. Not everybody's going to see the value of it. But if you really did live the teachings of a Buddha, a Jesus, or a Lao Tzu, you'd be an outcast. These men were outcasts. And they suffered grievously, socially, for the things they taught to help people realize their spirit. We have two ways to go in life, the body and the mind, or the spirit of our life. The choice is ours. So it doesn't really matter what uh, car you're driving. I'm going to try all these cars, all in an effort to see if changing cars changed me. Just like uh, we imagine changing uh, bodies might change us. Well, it doesn't. No matter where you go, there you are, whether you like it or not. People have a funny way of looking at you, though, when you're in a truck. They assume they understand who you are and what you're doing. Maybe they think I'm hauling groceries or maybe uh, doing some chores, but actually all I'm doing is just driving around in this old tin bucket. Hasn't changed me at all. Has it changed you? If you look at your life, you look at your body, you look at your world, you're still the same on the inside, no matter who you are. So you gotta ask yourself the question, how do I reach myself? That's what life's all about, reaching yourself, getting to know the person that you are and not being fooled by the appearances of <laughs> what you're driving around in, so to speak, on the outside of yourself. Life is a very interesting venture. It can give us so much. If we're not fooled by the appearances of our body and our minds, we can actually learn to love this life. I say live with your body, but don't live as your body. Learn to live with it as your friend, but don't uh, look at it as who you are, really are. To befriend your body and your mind is to learn to you know, live in a harmony with them. Friendship to me is very important. If I'm going to be a friend to you or anyone else in my life, I first have to be a friend to myself. How I relate to myself. I have to be okay with the many parts of me. Ah, sometimes I'm a, 
I'm a compact, sometimes I'm a van, sometimes I'm a truck, sometimes I'm a vet, and sometimes I'm just an economy car. Sometimes I'm all of these things. Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm sad. It all has to do with the body and the mind and whatever mood they're in. They're in pain, they're hurt, desire, ambition, pride. That's what ruins our whole life. We tend to think that uh, we are not who we really are on the inside. People only have a philosophy of who they are on the inside. They don't really know what they are. What's your philosophy about who you are? Do you think you know who you are? Or are you only a truck driver or a van driver? Are you just a husband, a wife, a worker, a son, a daughter? You know, all those labels have a way of ruining you and making you very miserable. Start to find out who you are. Heck, nobody likes you anyway. And as long as you're serving the purpose of another person, they think they love you. But the moment you're not uh, driving the truck anymore, you're not driving the van anymore, you've changed a little bit on the inside, all of a sudden people say, you've changed, you're not the same anymore. Well, of course not. If you're maturing in love, you're changing every single moment. I say befriend everybody. Try to find yourself in everyone. This is the deepest maturity of personal relationships and spirituality. We are individuals, yes, but we are also one. We live in a great big beautiful pool of love. And when we are willing to dip into that pool and have that uh, experience, all of the uh, bodies of our life don't matter anymore. Hey, nobody here likes you anyway. Does it really matter what you're driving or how you look, old or young? sick or poor, rich or fancy, does it really matter? No. What matters is, are you in touch with yourself? Are you in touch with your life? Have you found your presence inside enough so that you can greet everyone as though you are greeting yourself? Even as Jesus said, love ye one another as I have loved you, to see yourself in everyone. That is really the art of living. And that's where we really put ourselves out, where we put ourselves out of our body, into our spirit and we start to make a difference in our life. What a lovely opportunity you and I have in this life to meet everybody we possibly can and see who we are and then to bow to that. From my worst enemy to my best friend, there's no difference. The most that matters in my life is that I catch their spirit and I begin to see myself in them. And when I'm willing to do that and understand that, that is when my life starts to take a wonderful change. So, I'm going to leave the pickup here, and I'm going to go find myself. I'm going to uh, just drive the cars as I need them. Some days I need a pickup, and some days I don't. Some days I want to drive around maybe in a sports car, and maybe some days I just want to be in the economy car. It doesn't really matter. The one that really matters is, do I know who I am, no matter what I'm driving? And do I let those things affect me? <laughs> what a wonderful trip this has been to be able to play with all of this. The metaphor is real simple. You're none of the things you believe in, you're none of the things you want, and you're none of the things other people have told you. You are who you are, and that's all that really matters. Well, I really enjoyed borrowing all my neighbors' cars. That, it was really a lot of fun. We borrowed them all. The point I want to make to you is this. Your body is your body. Your mind is your mind. There's not a lot you can do about them. I don't want you to love them, and I don't want you to hate them. I want you to befriend them. I want you to acknowledge who lives within you. That's the one you really want to know. I, uh, I'm reminded of a story. I used to know many years ago, Spring Byington. She was a movie actress, maybe some of you remember her. And she used to drive this old beat up car and her daughter used to say to her, Mom, why do you drive that old car when you could afford a lot better one? And she says, Dear, the car doesn't give me class. I give the car class. Well, I was about 18 years old when she said that and I will never ever forget that story. She was right. She was really saying what I'm trying to say to you. Your body can't give you love. Your mind can't give you love, but you can. You're the one that counts. You're the one that has the meaning. You're the one that has the spirit. Why not go for that? Stay with that. Why not accentuate your spirit less how you look and what other people think of you? Hey, nobody likes you anyway. Get it? 
So give up the whole idea of living for your meat suit and your mind. Try to look at your life a little playfully. Hmm. I live inside here. I'm the one that gives this whole thing beauty. I'm the one that makes this a form of art. I'm the one that befriends my life. And if you befriend your life through love, you've made a very beautiful and large contribution to this world. I want to thank you for allowing me to come into your home and to share with you these brief little moments that we have together each week here on Aspire. I hope in some way they help you. We'll be back again next week with the final episode of this series on Nobody Likes You Anyway. I hope you'll join us. Forgive me. Namaste. What's more important to you? Being happy through pleasure or being avoid... What, 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 what do you want me to... A little GTO. Wah, 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 wah. What's it mean to have a jelly bean? Thank you. It's my big present. Huh? What does it mean to have a jelly bean? Listen to her whine. My IQ just dropped about 100 points. They rise and they fall. And cars come behind me and ruin everything. Let me go down this way. No. Oh, God. Oh, perfect. Oh. You all right? That hurts. You're so busy wanting everything you want to compensate for the pain you refuse to acknowledge that you feel. Oh, my God. How are you going to segue out of that one? I'm going to have you drive off into the sunset. <laughs>